Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And God wants to move through us. Amen? All of us. Not just Pastor Everett, but every one of you. Every one of you are a special person. Amen? Because you know how I know that? You want to know how I know that? Because you're here. <laughs> Amen? You're tuned in. Amen? You're here today. So that means God wants to speak to you. Amen? He wants to touch your life. He wants to change your direction. He wants to change your attitude. He wants to move in your life. He wants to raise you up. Amen? He wants to do something powerful with you because we're all gifts. Okay? Gifts. And uh, that's, that's important to know. I'm a gift, right? I'm a gift. You're a gift. They're a gift. The things you don't like is a gift sometimes. Most of the time. Like the things I don't understand is a gift most of the time. The, th the, the, the troubles in our life, they're gifts too. Amen? All things are of Him and through Him and to Him, right? Romans 11, the last verse, 36, talks about that. But let's look at Luke chapter 23, verses 41 through 43 today. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm excited today. I don't know if you're excited. Maybe you just, just say, man, turn to your neighbor and just say, Pastor Everett is excited. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Luke, Luke chapter 23, verses 41 through 43 today. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. If you have another version, it's, you just read what you have. And, but I'm going to ask you to read it out loud. And if you don't have a Bible, we do have some in the back if you need one, or we have it on the screen. It's important that we read the Word of God, though. The only way that your life will ever change is if you read the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. I was talking to somebody this week, and they said, I just don't have any faith. And I said, when's the last time you read your Bible? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. If you don't have any faith, you haven't read the Word of God. Amen? Amen? So it's important. This is the most important thing that you will ever do. Okay? It's not to come into the altar and, and pouring out your heart to the Lord. It's reading the Word of God. That's what feeds your spirit. And your spirit man has to come alive and get stronger than your flesh man, okay? And if, if your spirit man is stronger than your flesh man, you can go out and fight the battle. You can walk through some trouble. You can pray some prayers. God will begin to do things because, because your spirit man is alive and strong, amen? That's why you're here today, amen? God wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to your spirit, amen? Amen, he may not, you may go out and have to go back home to the same, same mess you, you left, okay, when you came here, but when you go back home, you'll be different when you get there, amen? And God will move in your life, amen? I want God to move in my life. I want him to shake stuff out of my life. I want him to transform me, amen? In every way, in every way. Luke 23. Woo! Yeah, let's stand, good job. Paul stands up, so let's just stand in honor of the Word of God today. Let's do that. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Good to see you today, Paul. Yeah. He came to remind, remind me to honor the Word of God. Yeah. Luke, Luke 23, verse 41. Whew, I don't even know. <laughs> I, just, I just feel something special today. Okay, and we're just going to interrupt a conversation. Are you ready? Luke 23, 41. And we indeed justly... For we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We honor your word. We ask that you open our eyes, our ears, our heart especially our mind today, Lord, that we can see, hear, know, and understand something brand new from the Word of God today. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so we, we look at this portion of Scripture, and, and it, there's so much here. Uh, we really, I really had to, to kind of condense it down just for a moment, but we see three men in a situation, three men on a cross. And uh, the three men on the cross was Jesus and Two thieves, one on the left and one on the right. And, and one, one was there because of love. One was there and he was still angry. And one was there, but he was in, it, with a repentant heart. 
And, and so there's, there's conditions, right? And consequences in our life. And, and we see this on display in this very moment. And uh, one, one of these days I'll, I'll preach a whole series just on this, this, this little picture we're going to look at today. But uh, it, it, and, and it, if, if you know why you're here, right, wherever here is, if you know why you're here, it helps you to know what you're there for. Right? If you know why you're here, wherever here is, it helps if you know what you're there for. Because often we go by the here's in our life and we don't know why we're there and we, 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 get, we go right past the opportunity, right? And we, we miss it. And that's the, one of the biggest troubles I think we have as Christians. We're looking to, to make ourselves feel good. We're making, we, we want ourselves to look good. We want all of the things that we think we need or want or desire, and maybe we're not even there for that reason at all. We're there for something else. And Jesus knew His purpose. He was on the cross. He knew His purpose. So much so that He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't even know what they're doing. Right? And so, so if, if Jesus displays love through the circumstances of death, on a cross and scourging and pain and beyond belief kind of pain. I mean, we, we, someone says something wrong to us and we're in, we're, we're, our whole world goes on and comes unglued and we're like, ah, I can't believe it, they don't like me. And we, like, we, we end up going to a, a, a far distant island by ourselves and we, we say, it's over, I'm done. They, they don't like me anymore. <laughs> Jesus had a plan. And Jesus' plan, I, I love that picture because Jesus was on a cross. It wasn't even his plan. Because God, right? Jesus had to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Right? Jesus had to come into alignment with God's plan. Amen? Amen? That's, how, that's how this works. That's how our life works. Our life works best when we align our life with God's plan. Woo, the hard problem, the hard the hard turn in our life is when we come to a place where we go I just want to do what God wants to do and I'm willing to lay down my life because my life is hid in Christ kept by God right the plan of God is through Christ through his mission or plan for my life I have to know it though right amen you know what makes me cry about this picture what what makes me cry is is the destination that God put Jesus at the cross, right? He put him at the cross. That destination uh, makes me cry because it, it, it's often in the things that I don't want to do, amen? It's in, the, it's in the pain or the suffering, right? That, that God's plan is fully realized in our life. I don't think that God has come, God, God isn't here, all right, to give you pleasure, okay? He's not here to give you a, a Lambo. I mean, I'd love to have a Lam Lamborghini and drive it around. I'd, I'd, I'd be like, hey, look what God did. I like that. I'd like to have a, a huge building. I'd, like, I'd love to have uh, millions of dollars in a bank account. But you know what? Often those things, right? If I'm seeking those things, if I got those things, I wouldn't be doing God's plan. Amen? So our perspective of what we think we need has to change. Amen? I have to shift it off of whatever it is I think it is and say, God, I'm willing. I'm willing to die for you. Because that's what Jesus said. He said, I'm willing to die for you. I know this is not a popular message because it doesn't make you feel good. Dying doesn't feel good. But, but does, does joy forevermore sound awesome? Come on. Does, does heaven where, where, where there's no more sorrow, no more pain, no more tears, no more crying, no, no more disabilities. All of those things go away. Does that sound good? See, because my retirement policy is out of this world. Amen? All of us, 100 years from now, probably won't be here. Okay? We probably won't be here, but we'll be in heaven. Woo! Does that make you happy? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, okay. Thank you, Lord. You know, there are consequences. I'm going to talk to you just for a moment about consequences. 
They're, they're, they're always looming. <laughs> if, if I do, then I will, right? I will have consequences. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, right? There's always pushback for every action. Uh, <laughs> Joanne and I, we, we were driving this, this week a lot, and, uh, and we got in this habit, you know, as we were driving, because we, we, did, we didn't have a plan. <laughs> we just left. And uh, for a day and a half or two days, we were going to spend some time for our anniversary, and so we just started driving uh, Tuesday night right after prayer. We got done with prayer, and we left here, and we drove till like two in the morning or one something in the morning, and uh, and just found a place to stay, uh, and uh, we we stayed there. And uh, but as we progressed through the next couple of days, we we started uh, this conversation with with Siri. If you ever yeah, have a, an iPhone or whatever, maybe you have another uh, a thing called Alexa or something, but. So we started asking, you know, Siri, well, where is uh, such and such? How, how, Joanne was, you know, as the time went on, she kept asking them really strange things like, uh, you know, Siri, how long would it take me to walk to where we're going? <laughs> you know, it would be a day and uh, four hours or something, you know. And it was a constant problem that we had. And, and uh, so we kept asking and asking uh, Siri. And, uh, and, and Siri was, is frustrating. I don't know. If you know how frustrating Siri is, if you ever had to go somewhere and ask a question of, of, a, 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 of, of a computer, right? But it's frustrating because often they don't, even, they don't understand what you're saying, right? So I'm, I'm saying, hey, Siri, you know, da 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 And it was uh, over and over and over. And so finally, this one time, we were just talking and talking and talking. And finally, I just turned to Siri and I said, hey, Siri, shut your pie hole. <laughs> Okay, because I got tired of the answers I was getting, right? And I began to, I began to get frustrated because I didn't like the answer and they, they didn't understand what I was doing. And I, I started to think about, often in, in my life anyways, because uh, I've been married for 36 years and I, you know, I've gone through a lot, of, a, a, a lot of struggles as a dad, as a husband, as a business owner. Uh, in lots of areas of my life, I get, I get frustrated because I don't understand, right? And so, so when I'm asking uh, 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 to understand something, I have to be willing to look at the consequences, right? And so if consequences are going to come, right, and they are always going to come, every time that you're in relationship with someone, you're going to have a consequence, right? Right? And, and so, so when, I, when I go to God, all right, I got to expect to have a consequence. When he answers me, there's a consequence, right? <laughs> I, I'm going to ask God, I, God, I just, I, just wanna, I just want you to, you know, make me smart. <laughs> the consequence is sometimes when you're, when you're smarter than other people, pretty soon people start to despise that, right? Come on. And so, so there's always consequences. Luke, Luke tells us about, uh, he tells us about this story and, uh, and, and uh, uh, about, the, about, not, not only about the women, but Luke tells us about the two thieves, right? He tells us this story. And, and these two friends who are hanging beside Jesus, uh, whether they were friends or not, I don't know, but they were both thieves, right? They, they weren't murderers. They were thieves, okay? And so, so they, had, they, had a, they had made choices, and they had consequences for their choices. It was, it was death on a cross next to this strange guy named Jesus. One of, them, one of, one of the guys was, was uh, joining with the crowd and, and mocking Jesus. And the other one was like, hey, wait a minute. Maybe there's something more here. And he started saying to Jesus, remember me. When, I, when, when you go to paradise, remember me. I, I think Pilate, even Pilate himself, must have thought, what, what is going on here? Because there, there were, there were, he was stuck in the middle, almost as if Pilate was on trial uh, along with Jesus, right? As a leader, he was on trial along with Jesus because, because he had the Jews, he had the Romans, okay? He had the people, and he had all these, he had his wife, amen? She didn't, she said, don't have nothing to do with that guy. I had a dream last night, don't have nothing to do. So he had, coming at him from all different angles, he had, he had choices to make. And he had consequences for those choices. Ultimately, he washed his hands, right, and said, he said, his blood be on you, not on me. And yet it was Pilate's word that sent him to the cross. Amen. See, Jesus seems to stir up conflict 
everywhere he goes. And, and I think sometimes we think that there will be no conflict in our life because we have Jesus in our heart. Jesus in our life. The truth is, is that Jesus will always stir up conflict in your life. He's going to cause consequences to come into your life. He's going to give you directions that you don't like. He's going to lead you to places and you're not going to know what to do. And you're going to have to trust Him at His Word. You're going to have to listen for His still small voice. And sometimes do what you don't want to do. Amen? But my life belongs to Him. Amen? Amen. It has to come down to that. Am I willing to give Jesus my life? Amen? Amen. So Jesus, He made them all uncomfortable, right? (laughs) To the Jews, Jesus was an imposter. The people found Him worthless. But I find Him to be the comforter. Amen? I find Him to be the answer. I find Him to be the way. I find Him to be the truth. I find Him to be the life. Right? Uh, Pilate killed him to, to please, killed Jesus to please the people. But ultimately, the authority was given by God. Amen? Pilate, Pilate was used by God to do His will. Amen? His, his will for the people, for you and I, so that we can be saved. It was by the blood of that sacrifice that I have redemption. Amen? It had to happen. Amen? It had to happen. I could, it couldn't have happened any other way. I, I wonder if we could just take a break for a second and think back in your life and look at all of the struggles that you've had and all of the things that you're unwilling. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. There's some things in my life I'm struggling to let go of. Okay? Hurts and pains and, and, and trials and things I don't un- understand fully. And, and I have to be willing to release those things, right? I have to be willing. Are you willing to release those things and say, you know what, God? It was the only way. I know it was the only way to bring me to today. Amen? Amen. And then take a deep breath and go. There's still hope. You're still breathing. There's still hope. There's still hope. If there's still hope, then what are you going to do today different than yesterday so that you can let His will be done in your life? Amen? I will not waste another day looking backwards and mourning over the loss or the tragedy or the circumstance. I will... I'm not going to say this. I'm never going to think about it again. The truth is that you're going to think about it again. All right? You're, you're going to think about it again. But when you do, you say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice. Amen? Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Because his sacrifice was worse than ours. I don't know. I've been through some stuff. You haven't been through nothing. I, you should see what I went through. No, no. We begin to complain and tell each other how worse we are. Jesus went through far worse than you ever have probably ever will. (coughs) Amen? The cross stands not looking for your opinion. Come on. Jesus, Jesus, the cross of Christ, doesn't look for your opinion. Right? It stands to remind you, and it reminds me today (laughs) that Jesus loves me. Amen? And He loves me enough not to leave me alone. Amen? Not to leave me alone. Here's the contrast. Let me talk to you about the contrast. Choosing the cross will always leave you with consequences. Let me just finish with that. Right? Choosing the cross always leaves you with consequences. Amen? It's true. Okay? So my expectation is there's a consequence coming, right? Right? I can't go there. Can't have that friend. Can't look at that movie. Can't listen to that music. Amen? Come on. Got to go to church. Got to 
got to not forsake the same assembling of ourselves together. I don't care if COVID, COVID's there. Got to assemble, got to come together. Amen? Because that's, that's what the, the scripture says. We got to come together. I'm not an island all by myself. Not all standing in a field by myself. Amen? We got to come together. I need people. I need, I need a congregation. I need people to be around. I got to put roots down somewhere. Amen? I can't, I can't just go. I know some people. Come on now. They, they, they don't want to go to church somewhere all the time because they don't want everybody to know all their stuff, okay? They don't want to have a relationship with somebody. But the truth is, you need to put roots down. Right. Amen? God has called us to be rooted yeah. and grounded in truth. Amen? Yeah. Got to find that church. Yeah. Got to find that pastor. Got to find a, a body of believers that, that's going to do something for God. Amen? And we got to do it together. Amen? Christ was innocent. Oh, that's the contrast. Right? He was innocent. He didn't deserve it. <laughs> Do something to us when we're innocent that we didn't deserve, and we're going to cry and complain <laughs> to everybody we can, that will listen to us. We'll cry and complain on Facebook and all over the world. Well, they'll know it because we're innocent. But Jesus was innocent. He didn't deserve to die for you. But love always surrenders to the beloved. Love always surrenders to the beloved, right? The one that is loved, right? The, the one that loves always surrenders to the one it loves, right? Amen? Yeah. Talking from the experience of a husband with a wife. 36 years. And I have to surrender, right? I have to surrender to her. And you know what? She has to do the same thing to me. She has to surrender to me. Amen? We, we can see it here, but what about with God? He's not my sugar daddy. He's not my sugar. I, 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 just, I, just, I just, I don't like this thought, but what happens is there's some people, they're probably not here today, that go to God and they just ask Him for stuff all the time. And they're not willing to give their life to Him. They just want Him to fix it. Fix this in my life, God, and then I'll serve you. Fix it in my life. And God is saying, give me your life. He may not fix it. What if he doesn't fix it? What if he doesn't give you what you want? What if he never gives you anything at all? Do you love him above what you think you need? That's a good question. Good question. God is choosing to build his church any way he wants to. Right? Build your church, God. There's a new song out. It says, build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up. It's your church. You know, I used to think that this was my church, but this is not my church. This is his church. Amen? Yeah. Amen? You people uh, don't belong to me. You belong to Jesus Christ. I might be a pastor, but you guys belong to Jesus. Amen? Yeah. And so, so if I don't, I don't give you the word of God. You don't have to come back. Amen? But it, if I give you the word of God, you may not come back. <laughs> it's the truth. And you know what? It don't matter. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is that you receive the word of God. Amen? So that you can grow and become all that you're supposed to be for the kingdom of God. To be enlarged. Amen? Not your building. Not your church. It's his church. And his church, last time I checked, is right here in us. Right? Jesus, build your church in me. Build your church in me, God. Build your church in me so that I can go. I want to be fitly framed. I want to be fashioned and formed and set into position so that I can be used by God for something awesome. Ooh, I thought that God loved me. I thought that he was going to save me. But he actually wanted me for a sacrifice. Woo. Uh, see, it's, it's almost as if not only was Pilate on, on trial, not only were, was, was Jesus on trial, but it's almost as if God was on trial. But I'm going to tell you, it's almost as if we were on trial. Because what put Jesus on the cross was our sin, amen? amen. And we have to make a decision because of that cross. we got to make a decision that because of that. We can no longer go out this door. See, because what you receive today, amen? The truth you receive today, it has consequences. 
Amen? You no longer, what you know now, you're responsible for. Someone once told me, he said, I didn't know that was in the Bible, and they weren't responsible for it until they read it. And now you're responsible for what you know. Amen? And once you know something, you've got to go do something with it. Amen? That's a consequence. Once you, once, I used to say this at youth group. I used to tell kids, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say, once you start down the road of truth, you never can turn back around because you've learned truth. You've started to feel what truth is. You've started to see what truth is. And that consequence is always going to follow you the rest of your life. And so my job as pastor, okay, or a teacher is to teach you to, the truth so then your life can have another consequence. And you can have the, 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 not, just the, not just the knowledge, but the tools to begin to do something different with your life. Amen? Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, there is nothing you can do that will ever undo my love for you. And I think that grace and mercy is so awesome. And, and so many churches today preach grace and mercy, but they never teach you about consequences. They ask you to, you know, I, I was talking to somebody uh, a while back and they said, you know, you know, I, this person had a gift and, and they can just uh, do, do whatever they want because they got a gift from God. And God gave them a gift. And you know what? The truth is God did give them a gift. But that doesn't mean that they have the right to do whatever they want. Amen. 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 That's so true. Because we want to do whatever we want. We want God to go with us and be with us and we want everybody to feel sorry for us and, and, and to let us do whatever we want. But, but change never happens when you just keep doing whatever you want to do. Change happens when we acknowledge the truth and we walk forward into that, amen? That calling, that, that purpose that we have in Him, right? Four unfair trials, right? It wasn't, it was uh, Jesus, Jesus was on trial and He had four unfair trials. He, had a, he was scourged, right? He, unfairly, he was, he, that was illegal as a, in Roman law. If someone was innocent, you couldn't scourge a man if he was innocent, right? But He was unlawfully scourged, right? He, uh, there, there, was, uh, there, there was false witnesses, right? There was, not, there, not, there was humiliation. Uh, not even the cross, right, would, would deter Christ from the ultimate model of what love looks like for us. He was, he was, he was on, 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 on his course. His whole course in life was to go to the cross. That was the purpose of his life, was to go to the cross. And I think we can look back and say, Wow, Jesus was going to the cross. But I just wonder if we could look back in our life, what, what is the purpose of my life? Why, am, why, have I, why have I gone through all that I've gone through? It's so I can live my life miserable. Right? Is that what it is? I can live my life on miser miserable. And I, I can live my life uh, uh, sorry. I can live my life uh, mad. I can live my life frustrated. The truth is, is that maybe you went through all that you went through so that you can help somebody else. Isn't that what Jesus did? So let's allow, let's allow the suffering, right, to move, move us into a new place. Hebrews 12, verses 5 through 7. I love this, these verses in Hebrews 12, 5, 5 through 7. I'll just, I'll just uh, give you a little bit of it. I believe Paul wrote this. He says, And ye, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, I highlight this in my Bible because. Sometimes when I get to be a little whiny, a little whiner, whining whiner, okay, I remind myself of this verse, and it says, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Verse 6, for whom the Lord, I underlined this one and highlighted it a couple, three times in my Bible, because for whom the Lord loveth. Does the Lord love you? I want you to, I want you to, Turn to your neighbor right now and just tell him, Jesus loves you. For whom the Lord loveth, he, 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 he chastens, right? He corrects, that's right. And, and scourges, ooh! Jesus was scourged. He was stripped of the flesh in his body. And, and, and I don't know about you, but I want, to, I want some of the things in my flesh to be stripped off. I want some of the desires of my flesh. I want some of the, the dreams that I want to be stripped off. I want, I want some of that to be taken away, but I don't want it to be taken away either. <laughs> right? 
We, 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 we want God to give us all the good stuff, but we don't want to take anything away. But, but whom the Lord loveth, it says. Let me read it again. By whom the Lord loveth. By whom the Lord loveth. By whom the Lord loveth, He corrected. And you know what? It takes work. It takes love to be corrected. We don't, we don't want spare the rod and spoil the child. We want the spoiling, but we don't want the rod. We don't want the spanking. Right? We want all the good things, and we want to hear a message that talks about the good things, but sometimes, as long as you're breathing, and you're alive, and you're in relationship with someone else, <laughs> you're going to go through some stuff. And it's, it's okay to go through some stuff if I'm expecting God to, right, take away some things in my life. I, I, Joanne is so different than me. She's so different than me. Sometimes she says something to me like, I don't even like, I won't mention what she says. <laughs> For fear. <laughs> but, but sometimes she'll say something to me that I don't, I don't like. And you know what? That's because she's different. She's different than me. And, and it's okay if she's different than me. Because I, I <laughs> we heard this joke this week. We were, we, we were somewhere and, and the guy said, he said, well, what if everybody was the same? And his grandfather says, he says, if everybody was the same, they'd all like your grandma. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be the same. If we're not all the same, that means we're different, and that means there's going to be conflict. Amen? And that means that there's going to be correction. Amen? And that means that if we're going to get corrected, amen, that means we're not going to be happy about it. But in the end, right? In the end, I get the fruit of righteousness, right? I get, I, get, I get to know that I'm loved, amen? Because it takes work for God to love you and to correct you. Woo. It also tells me something else. God has a relation. He wants a relationship with you, amen? He wants a relationship with me. That, that means that, that I, I get up in the morning and I read my Bible, because I want relationship with God. I want God to speak to me, amen? I want Him to move me. I want Him to change me. I want Him to correct me. Every relationship with God will always go through a chastening, a correction, right? Every son whom He receives, He scourges. He, he wants to remove the flesh from that relationship, amen? I want to I see what He sees. I want to know what He knows. I want to be who He wants me to be. I want to be in position, right? I want to be in position. Amen? <sighs> Say it with me. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. See, to say that is so hard. It's so hard to say that because then I just see a picture of Jesus on a cross and I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I want to be like Him. Amen? I want to be like Him, displaying the love of God to all of the world through the moments of my life that I don't like. Amen? Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. Because God is love. God is love and God is love, right? He's, he's good. God is good all the time and all the time God is. But He's, he's a God of love. Amen? Love. One of the greatest attributes of God is He is love, right? It's, it's, it's the work. Amen? It's the work, it's the working of, di of discipline in our lives, right? That demonstrates my love for God. It's the working of discipline in my life. It's the getting up every day and reading my Bible. It's going to church. It's praying my prayer, amen? It's, it's, it's praying for someone else. It's the disciplines of life that demonstrate my love for God, amen? I can say I love God. If I just said I love God, or Joanne, right? Uh, I did it when we were married, and I'll let her know if it changes. Right? We got married 36 years ago. I told a pastor, and he said, I love Joanne. And I'll just let her know when it changes. I, I have to work at letting her know that I still love her. Amen? There's work, and there's discipline in it. Right? <laughs> now, we sing this song. We sing this song a lot in church. It says, Even if I don't feel it, God is working. Even if I don't see it, God is working. 
And I'm going to tell you, most of the time we don't feel it and we don't see it, but God is always working. He's always working on your, on your behalf because he loves you. He loves you. I'm going to trust God that he's taking me up. Amen? Amen. Not down. I'm going to trust that God is taking me up and not down. You know, the conflict that we see at the cross is, is very uh, evident in the two people hanging on each side of him, right? One, one thief, the one on the left, was looking down. The one on the right was looking up, right? And I wonder if that's not a good picture for us to look at today. Are we looking down or are we looking up? It's, it's such a good, a, good, a good question that we have today. The, 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 the cross is a symbol of, of life and death, right? Of heaven, of hell. But it's, it's the greatest symbol of choice that you will ever see ever in your life. It's a choice. It's about a choice. Say, say, tell your neighbor right now, say, I'm, I'm making a choice. Because of the cross, I'm making a choice. And so our sin, our sin our sin is not what keeps us. Right? Our sin is not is is not what keeps us. I want to say this right. Our sin is not what keeps us from God. Because God made a way. Our sin is not what keeps us from God. Because God made a, a way. His name is Jesus. And so we have a choice, right? I have a choice. I, I think it's awesome. It's awesome. No matter where you are, no matter what's going on, you still have a choice. You have a choice. You have a decision to make. Right? You have a decision to make. The information producing the emotional distraction in your life is it from the Word of God? Is it from the truth? Is it from there? Or is it based on some other thing? Or circumstance? Right? Uh, our problem is our inability to respond to the love of God and to repent and to change. That's our problem. It's, a, it's our inability to respond and to change. I'll say it one more time. It's our inability to respond and change because the answer is already here. We have the answer. We have separation anxiety disorder is what we have. We, we want to live our life like we want to live it and we won't let the love of God separate us and move us in a different direction. Separation anxiety disorder. It's just happening all over the place right now. <laughs> What, we, what we're missing in the world is true leaders. We're looking for somebody else to lead us somewhere we're not willing to go ourselves. And so we won't even let go of something that God has asked us to let go of for 23 years, 80, 83 years, or however long it is, and just let go of something. Drop it. Let it go. Because I don't trust Him that He loves me. And that he's giving me a spanking right now. He's asking me to come up and be a son. Go ahead and be loved. Go ahead and allow, allow his, his love to fully fill your life. Trust him with the, the rest. And stop mourning over what you lost or what you don't have anymore. Amen. And trust that even what I have in my hand right now is more than enough. Amen? To do whatever he's called me to do. To take me wherever he's going to take me. And then I can rise up, amen? And I can trust Him again. I can love Him again. I can allow the Spirit of God to move through me again. I can see God change, not just my life, change the world. Amen. Let's change the world together. Let's do it together. Yeah. Amen? amen. Yeah. Romans 5, 1 through 5, I'm running out of time, but I'm going to talk to you about the conflict, okay? So Romans chapter 5, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Say, say it with me, peace. peace. I have peace with who? God. With God because of what? Faith. 
faith. Therefore, being justified by faith, I have peace with God, right? Peace with God. Take a deep breath right now. Just go like this. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. I purchased it with my faith. Amen? That's truth. That's truth. I purchased peace with my faith, right? And verse 2. For by whom also you have access. <laughs> Say that word, access. 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 I have access, right? Uh, into, his, into this grace. I like it when he says this grace, right? This grace. Not your grace, not my grace. It's this grace. Because that, that's, a, that's a, I don't know uh, the exact word. It's a, a hyper or something uh, a, a, a word that goes before grace that says that it's a party. We're party to it, right? We're, we're all part and parcel of grace. The same grace. Amen? It's the same grace. It's not, not, you don't need more grace, I don't need more grace, you don't need less grace, and I don't need less grace. It's the same grace, amen? The same grace. It's, it's, it's all-encompassing for all the world, for, not just for me, not for, just for you, but for all of us, right? We have, this, we have access right into this grace wherein we stand. I'm standing in grace today. I'm standing in grace. And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. In rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. So that I'm standing in grace, rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. God is going to get the glory, right? He's going to get the glory. Amen? And so, so my, my hope is that He gets the glory. Not only so, verse 3, but we also glory in tribulation. Right? Also, knowing that tribulation worketh, Patience. Come on. I, I went somewhere. I heard a message one time, probably more than once. Never ask God. <laughs> Never ask God for patience, right? Because He's going to bring tribulation. But I'm going to tell you something right now. There's a secret for you. You're always going to be experiencing tribulation. Because just because you come to the cross, there will always be a conflict. And there will always be consequences. So my expectation is that there's going to be a, a fight in my life. Amen. There's always going to be a fight in my life. As long as I'm breathing, I'm always going to have a fight in my life. Amen? Paul says it best. He says, I fight the good fight of faith. That's how I have peace with God. Through faith, right? I have peace with God. So, not only so, but we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation works patience. I, I put this in my Bible. Proof God is working. Right? It's proof that God is working. It's proof that God is working. <laughs> look at what he did, right? Look, look at what God did, right? It's proof that he's working in my tribulations. I can look back at my tribulations and see God is working. I can see God is working because I went through some stuff. I've been through some stuff. I've been through some changes. I've been through some things I didn't like. I've seen God take me all the way through uh, depression. I've I t- I seen him take me through uh, bankruptcy. I've I, I seen him take me through uh, failed relationships. I've I seen him take me through uh, times in my life where I didn't know where I was going to get no gas and or, uh, where I wasn't going to get, where was I going to get my next meal and where was I, how was I going to pay for the groceries and how was I going to go put diapers on the kids and how was I going to do this and how was I going to do that. But I've seen God take me through some stuff. And so I can look back and say, you know what? I've been through some stuff, but God has always been faithful. I can be patient now, even if I don't see Him working. Even if I don't feel Him working, I can still be patient. Amen? For a little bit longer. I'm going to hold on. We used to say that we go to church, right? How are you doing? I'm holding on. I'm holding on. But, but sometimes you've got to have some patience. Patience. God is working, right? And patience experience and experience hope. Hope making not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in the hearts, in our hearts, by the Holy Spirit. God deposits something in us. He, just, he deposits love in us. And, and it, He deposits His love in us. When you get into a relationship with God, He deposits love in me. And then I can, I can trust that love. Amen? I can trust that He's for me. I can trust that even in the middle of the conflict, that He's going to take me through it. The prize, the proof, and the privilege is the love of God. The prize, the proof, 
and the privilege is the love of God. I'll say it one more time. The prize, the privilege, and the proof is the love of God. Amen? I, I, I need that in my life. We are in the presence. of God. The question is, will I be involved or uninvolved? That's the question. Am I just going let it, to let it, let it go and walk away? Am I going to be involved in what he's doing or uninvolved? The thief on the left was un unrepentant. He, even in the middle of his consequences, he was unrepentant. But the one on the right said, you know what, Jesus? Can I be with you in paradise? I want to go with you. I know there's consequences. I'm going to die anyways. I'm going to die anyways. The truth is that all of us are going to die. I, I was talking to somebody one day. They said, Pastor Everett, they didn't call me that. They called me something else. They said, if, if someone point, pointed a gun at my, at my head, it, uh, I, I, I think I, I would tell them that uh, I was not a Christian. I said, like, oh, okay. The truth is, is that, I, this is what I said to them. I said, you, you're going to make that decision before you get to that moment, though. And you're going to make it li uh, little by little in your life. And, and some of us would say, oh, you know, I'd give my life to the Lord. If someone come point a gun at my head, I'd say, yes, I'm a Christian. And bam! But, you know, dying's the easy part. It's living. That's the hard part. It's, that's the hard part. Living is the hard part because it's, it's while we're still alive that we're still trying to work our own agenda. Right? And so the thief on the right was looking at Jesus and it says, are you the... Are you the Son of God? Have, have you, did, did you come to die for my sins? For my consequences? Are, are you going to paradise? Will you, will you come and will you take me with you? Yeah. My hope, I don't have any hope left in the world. <laughs> but you look like I can put, I can put my hope in you. And, and they were all going to die. Just like us, we're all going to die. But can, 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 I, can, can, can I put my hope in you, Jesus? Yes, you can. Today. 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 He loves you today. He loves you today. Right now, whatever's going on in your life, He loves you today. Don't, don't try to fix all the stuff in your life. Just give Him your life. Just trust Him today. Our expectation is that God will remove the crops that we've already planted in our life. That's what our expectation is. Oh, wipe the slate clean, God. Boop, miraculous new crop. That's what we expect. We expect to live our life all the way to today with no consequences. And it's like, now God, take the consequences of the crop that I've planted in my life. That's our expectation. It's time to set new expectations, though. Yes. It's Jesus. I need to look. I want to look at Him. I want to look to Him. That's what we need to get back to. All right? And not, not trying to, to, to ask Him to take away all of my bad decisions to this day, but Lord, help me to make a good decision today. <laughs> I say that with a laugh. <laughs> you, you don't want to know why? Because I know, I know that I'm going to make a bad decision tomorrow, okay? I don't know what it's going to be and how it's going to I know I'll not make the right choices, but I, I know that I can trust that this good decision today will lead me to another good decision tomorrow, amen? Even in the middle of some bad stuff, I'm going to keep on making a better decision. I'm going to keep trusting God more. I'm going to keep it growing in experience and love for Him because I know that God loves me. Change will never happen without conflict. 
Change will never happen without consequences. Change will never happen without contrast. My expectation is that I'll never, not ever go through conflict, contrast, or conflict ever again or have consequences. My expectation is that Jesus loves me. Amen? 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 And I know that change, change will happen. Change will happen when I truly love God, when I truly give Him my life. If you would stand with me, I'll, I want to just tie a bow in this message today. The psalmist wrote, Psalms 121, I used to have a, a Bible, and I had this old Bible marker. It had this, this psalm on it. And I used to go every, throughout my pages as I would read. I, would, I had this bookmark in there, and it says, uh, in the first two, verses, uh, first two verses of Psalms 121, it says, I will lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. And then it says in verse 2, My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth, right? My help come from the Lord. And, and you know, Jesus was crucified on a little hill just outside the walls of Jerusalem. A little hill. It actually, they call it the place of the skull because it looked like a, a skull. It was a little hill. People could see it for, for a, a, quite a ways away. He was uh, close to the road. They could walk up about a stone throws distance from where they buried him. He was on a hill. And, and that's that's the same thing, I believe. I like to think David was thinking about that hill when he wrote that psalm. I will lift my eyes to the hill from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And that same God that made heaven and earth is still alive today. And he sent Jesus, right, to be the propitiation, the full payment for my sin. I no longer have to carry my sin with me. I no longer have to carry those expectations with me anymore. I can release that to Him. And that's the truth today. That you can be set free today. Amen? And that you can walk today with Jesus. And so I want to pray a prayer for all of us that are far from God today. Amen? Amen? We might be close to God, but come on. I want to be closer. Amen? I'm, far, I'm farther away from God than I want to be. I want to be closer to Him. I, I, <laughs> come on. Come on. I ain't going to go home with you. I ain't going to go up in your brain and think about what you're thinking about even right now. But I'm going to tell you right now that I want to be closer to Jesus. And so I want to pray a prayer right now. For all of us, all over the world right now, wherever you're listening from, whether you're in this room or you're outside, uh, wherever you're at, India, uh, Philippines, Venezuela, uh, uh, Idaho, wherever it is you're, you're from, Africa. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we ask together, we ask you to come into our hearts fresh and new. Come and touch us right now from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Father, we're standing in the middle of consequences. But Father, we, we break the power of those consequences right now and we ask to be set free by grace. And so Father, come and touch us right now from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Father, go before us, behind us, on each side of us, above us and beneath us. And Father, we give you our life. We give you our heart. We give you our mind. We give you our consequences. We give you every relationship, the good ones and the bad ones. Father, we give all of that to you right now. And Father, we're asking, we're repenting right now. And we're asking you to come have a relationship with us. Help us, Lord. Enable us, Lord, to walk with you by grace. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for, for your love, Lord. And we just want to feel your love in our heart, in our mind again, Father. And Lord, touch our, our, touch our face. Let our continence, Father, be lifted today, Lord. As we lift our eyes to the hill, Father, to the hill where, where your son, Jesus, was crucified, 
where he bled and died and gave his life. He gave his last breath and he said, Father, forgive them. So, Father, we receive that forgiveness right now. We receive that into our, our life fresh and brand new today, Lord, so that we can smile again, so that we can have joy again, so that we can have hope again, Lord. And, Father, we want you to be our dad. We want to go and be with you someday, but we want you to go with us every day through every circumstance. Help us, Lord, to say no. To say no to the world. And to say yes to you, Lord. Help us to say no to relationship that we got to say no to. Help us to say no, Lord, to thoughts that come into our, our mind and and try to guide our heart in areas that we shouldn't go. Help us to say no. Quicken us, Lord, by your Spirit. And fill us, Lord. <laughs> the world is absent from truth. And the truth is, that you still love your people today. <laughs> your, your heart hasn't changed towards your people, Lord. So, Father, have mercy and help us, God. Help us, enable us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay, stay right there. Stay right there. Don't move. Father, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood right now over your people over all of us that have just prayed that prayer. And I take authority right now. I stand in my office today. I take authority from this altar in Rockford, Illinois. I take authority all over the world right now. And I break right now the hold of the enemy off of people's lives, off of saints, off of people who have just prayed a prayer. And Father, I ask right now that you send an angel, God. And Father, we break bloodline curses, Father. We, we, we take authority over every, every, every hex, every spell, every witch, everything that has come against your people right now. Every, every poverty, Lord, every lack, everything that is missing, Lord. And we loose your people right now, Father. Set your people free right now. We shake off the chains and we rise up, Father, so that we can be your people in the world around us, Father, that the kingdom of God would be advanced today, Lord, that strength would come today, Lord, that might would happen, Lord, that, that, that battles would be won today, Lord. I rebuke the enemy right now. The Lord rebuke you, devil, in Jesus' name. Loose your people today, Lord, and set them free. In Jesus' name. Father, give us an ear to hear your voice. Speak to your people today, Lord. And help us, Lord. Help us to shatter the expectations of all of those around us. And help us to rise up and to be mighty warriors. And we thank you for that, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen.